Barb and Alex and we're in Chantarium and we're back in our little studio. We decided to do a little bit of reorganizing here because we have a very exciting parcel coming. We just want to make this place look more cozy, more like us, blue and green as you can see. So we're doing all of this, we're kind of actually in the middle of this <laughs> because we have a new machine coming into the shop which is the Extol P2 55 watt CO2 laser cutter which Excel has so graciously sent to us for a review and I think B-roll bar is going to tell you about it now. The Excel P2 is an intelligent desktop laser cutter. It has two cameras providing the positioning accuracy of 0.3 millimeters which is very good and in addition to the common cutting and engraving functions it supports engraving on curved surfaces or irregular surfaces, automatic pass-through for huge pieces and rotary engraving. And I'm gonna try to show you this machine from more of a small business slash artsy studio perspective versus a wood shop, which you can also see on other channels on YouTube. But this one's for the girlies, okay? The box that the laser arrived in was a bit intimidating, as you can see from my shocked face, especially with M1 sitting there to compare. <laughs> oh my god. It's huge, that's what she said. So, what's next? Fire! Unboxing this machine was pretty easy once I figured out the box was a lift off lid. The box was so large, I could fit in it like a cat. I cannot contain myself. The machine comes packaged very securely and I have to say it is heavy, weighing at about 45 kg. I knew that I technically had the space to put it in, but I had to take some time to figure it out. I'm trying not to buy new furniture, but it's hard. Finally we decided to temporarily put the laser on the table and move stuff around so that I could put the vent of the laser to the vent hole we had for the M1 and figure out a permanent solution after I get used to the P2 and know how I'd like to situate it. We had to call for reinforcements to safely maneuver this laser around. The next day I finished the unboxing by peeling off the protective films and going through the setup step by step as it is in the guide provided with the machine. The P2 is a bit different from the M1 because it is a CO2 laser and not a diode, so it is a bit different in operating but still fairly easy to get around. Let me show you what comes in the box. Instructions, a quick start guide, materials which include cardboard and plywood, antifreeze, an exhaust vent or as I call it, power cord and USB cable, some maintenance tools and spare screws, a funnel for the antifreeze and a ring for the vent. I checked that the laser module can move no problem, which is important to check if nothing got broken in transport, and in the base plate there were some more hidden goodies, namely two sheets of transparent acrylic, which I'm very excited about cutting and engraving with a P2. The next step is to take off the back cover. I am the dumb one. There's stickers over the screw that you're supposed to take out. It couldn't have been clearer. <laughs> And I still didn't notice. This is perhaps the hardest step, the taking of the cover. Laser tube! The laser tube is the heart of the machine. It's what makes the laser go prrt. For it to work, you have to fill it with coolant, which can be distilled water, but if the temperature in your area goes below zero, and in Poland it does, you need to add some antifreeze to it and the guide walks you right through it. It's one of those like kids proof cups for a good reason. Insert funnel. Connect machine to power supply. And then I think when we do that, the water is gonna flow into the tube and it's gonna look cool so I have to record it. <laughs> After the coolant is taken care of, the machine is pretty much set up. I just knocked the camera down and it hit the laser. But it doesn't matter because we cannot forget that it's pronounced Lassier. Lassier. The last step to do is to align the laser beam, which might came perfectly aligned. So let's test it out. Is it all set and ready for work? That was quick. Yeah, because I'm super speed. No, it's actually just really easy. I think the longest time we took to take the cover off, if you're better, without the nose. It's gonna be easy. Let's connect. Bye-bye. See, this area, it took the module and took a picture with a better camera on top. 
the air assist is automatic and everything. The hose is connected. <laughs> Watching the machine cut for the first time was a bit shocking to me. I knew it would be more powerful than the M1 because it has more power. It's in the name of it, but wow, it was super fast. That was like 10 seconds. No, it was like 50, but still. I didn't expect it to be so loud. It is loud, yeah. But wow. Mm, and the smell of caramelized wood. I think our exhaust situation is not perfect right now. But may on the detail is there as always. Okay, so are we opening <laughs> commissions or something? <laughs> Maybe we should. That was so quick. I am like, I think you can tell that I'm speechless. I want to try it on acrylic. That's the most excited I am about. Yeah, it's let's try acrylic. it. Are we doing the same thing? Yeah. I definitely recommend making your hose as short and straight as possible to make the venting as efficient as it can be. Maybe using some hearing protection as well. It's not deafening, but it's definitely louder than the M1. Wow. That's fast. Fast as fuck, boy. You wanna see some real speed? Jokes aside, this machine is going to make my dreams a reality. I am so happy! It's like, and it's so like clean, not sharp at all, because we were worried about that. Amazing. I think tomorrow when I bring all my files here, we will do some real cutting. But with these tests, I'm already happy, like already happy. I like that cut from that view, you know. We are back on day three, and I want to start with that and make it proper with two colors of acrylic which now should be a breeze i think and we're gonna do the yellow in transparent so i think it's gonna look cool and it's gonna be huge i mean it's big. the laser really had no problem at all with the acrylic i put through it i used the pre-programmed setting even though i got my acrylic locally and i didn't have to tweak anything at all I used a matte black for the letters and a transparent yellow for the background. On the yellow, I have engraved the outline of the letters so that I know where to glue them. This is very nerve-wracking and I probably should have started at the top. I have to recut this skull piece and it's not inherently the laser skull, it's just that we're using slats so whenever a thing falls through and then the laser cuts something that was next to it and it doesn't fall entirely, you know, flat, the laser is gonna hit the areas around. So as you can see, there's a little bit of marking here where the skull was cut first and then there were teeth here. So I just had to recut that piece, but other than that, I think it's perfect. It was really easy to align the letters with the engraved outline and I think this sort of sign can be a great gift to someone with their name or a good business to cut these for other people. Or for your fake lab, that works too. It is time. It's so cool. It's like 10 times cooler or a million times. And the size difference. Yeah. After doing my happy dance, I went straight back to the P2 with an idea I had for a long time, which might sound very boring to you, making a JSON the ruler and showing off the safety lock on the lid of P2. You're gonna hear the latch also close. See? I made a very special sewing ruler with clear acrylic and engraving, which I thought I did something bad with the settings because it seemed like the engraving sort of blew out from the lines it was supposed to be on. I think we may have overdone it on power and it has a little bit of this haze, but the lines are good, so I think it's gonna work. But it turned out that it was just dust from the engraving process and that is normal. I washed it and it is perfect. And you may ask me, Barbara, but why are you laser cutting a ruler? And it's because it's a special ruler, because for doll sewing, I need to have a tool to measure out seven millimeters for seam allowance, and nobody in their right mind produces stuff like this. So it has our logo on it, so it's cool. It probably looks cool in the dark when you light it on the edge. It's a bit cooler, but I think, you know, you get it. You get the point. The P2 has many exciting features, like the curved engraving, where it reads the surface of your regular object, like a bowl or a ukulele, 
and then you engrave it. So I wanted to try and embellish a bowl. I messed up the settings, of course, for the first time because I didn't know what I was doing. But for the second try, it was much better and you can see that the image actually follows the curve of the surface because the laser was following the curve of the bowl. If it wasn't, the beam would unfocus and the image would be blurry. I would love to play with this feature a little bit more in the future. I thought about engraving a doll, but I did some research on what they're made of and that would create like cyanide gas. So maybe let's not do that, but I will think about some Thing to do with it. At one point I decided to push the laser a little bit more and cut something really thick. So I was playing around with the P2 a little bit and we had some of this 18 millimeter pine left over from our counters and I was able to cut. I played with the settings a little bit but I was able to cut it in a few passes but still. So wow that's some power that this laser has. And with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> I love it. I was playing around with some gold acrylic for which there wasn't a setting in XCS but I was able to very quickly make a test grid because it's now a function of the program and the program has really come a very long way from back when we got it first for the M1 so I'm really happy to see that it's progressing and I know that it's constantly being updated so that's a really good sign. After we got acquainted with the P2 and we had it for a week, Alex had this brilliant idea to make some fun keychains for our patrons, as we could now cut all kinds of acrylic easily and quickly, including transparent, iridescent and whatnot. So we prepared some Enchantarium themed files and made some test designs. We couldn't help ourselves and of course made a Shadow the Hedgehog one. <laughs> Alex requested that. We made one uh, with the Enchantarium book, you know, sort of the original of our channel name. And for simplicity, I made this bling bling design with a crystal that represents Alex and I in our logo. I really like them, but vote for your favorite one in the comments. The P2 will definitely become a permanent member of my machine army. So I already have some ideas on how to permanently set it up in here. I already have many ideas for doll props and I'm very excited about cutting acrylic. I think you can do so many things so that you can personalize items. You can cut custom keychains, custom doll props, custom models for a hobby to sell. There's so many possibilities with this that I think anyone could really get into this hobby with the machines that Xtool is providing right now. And they're not paying me to say that, by the way. It's my honest opinion. And I hope to show you how fun it is to incorporate technology into your hobbies. And again, thanks to Xtool for sending us this machine because I love it. Love it. All right, catch you next time. Bye. Alex, say bye.